Welcome to Psychic Social, brought to you by psychic.co.uk. On this episode of Psychic Social. She was going to celebrate it with her fiancé, both 18. And this boy said to me, say goodbye to your sister, you're not coming, uh, she's not coming back, say goodbye to your sister, you're not going to see her again. And I thought, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Who's talking to me like that, you know? Welcome to Psychic Social with me, Oliver Duke, the podcast that explores all things from the psychic and spiritual perspectives, including interviews with famous psychic practitioners, discussions about the afterlife, the paranormal, and much more. So relax and enjoy the show. Today's guest has established an incredible following nationally and internationally with her astounding, accurate psychic mediumship and future forecast readings. With people from all walks of life, including celebrities from film and TV, seeking her often quite unbelievable ability to deliver in-depth psychic messages for them. People who have sat and had readings from this practitioner have been utterly astounded at the amazing accuracy in her seeing into the future. So we'd like to say a very warm welcome to psychic medium Carol Bromley. Thank you so much for joining us on the Psychic Social Podcast. Carol, how are you today? I'm oh, great, thank you, Oliver. How are you, love? I'm really well, thank you. I just was, we were talking before we came on actually uh, to record. And I was just saying, just getting over a bit of a bug from the children at the weekend, yeah. but feeling better now, thank you. Um, yeah. Yes. What have you been up to today? Anything exciting? Uh, readings with clients and more readings. Oh, good yes. stuff. Good and stuff. I am launching a new product soon as well, but that's under wraps at the moment, so I can't ah. reveal anything about that. Yeah? That sounds very exciting. Very it exciting is. indeed. Mm, okay, well, we're sort of uh, moving towards Christmas time, aren't we? And um, ramping up for that uh, soon, aren't we? I can see in the shops and on the TV that we're already being fed the uh, the Christmas vibes, aren't we? Yes, we are. And isn't that exciting? Because I feel like, and I'm sure everybody else does, that we've missed out on the last two years yeah. of uh, Christmas celebrations. And I do feel this year we'll all be able to celebrate with our families. Yes, definitely. Let's make it a big one this year, definitely, for sure. A- yeah okay well uh, it's good to hear all that thank you carol um well we're going to move on I- into the show now um and we've got a few questions in the in the show today on psychic social um we want to find out a bit more about you uh, and you as a, as a psychic medium and we want the listeners to learn a bit more about you as well uh, through this podcast so um we wanted to know from you with the various sort of challenges that we've all had to face over the last 18 months or so due to you know the, the pandemic how did you kind of personally maintain positivity and a sort of higher vibrational state and not get drawn into, which was quite a lot of fear that was being spread by the media? Um, how, how did you manage that? I managed quite well, actually, because I just didn't take any notice of the news and I didn't really listen to the news. You know, I, um, I'm i not conspiracy theorist, but, you know, I had conversations or people had conversations with me as well. So there's kind of uh, swapping, kind of uh, swapping information, if you like. Yeah, so I feel that's the way, that's the best way that I could cope. And not only that, but I found the news, no matter what, media channel it came from it was so conflicting and it still is so none the wiser don't know anything um all i know is that i think and i feel we're in a better place than where we was before this time last year sure sure yeah and um was there anything in specific that you kind of uh, did to sort of help yourself stay positive aside from just kind of ignoring the rubbish that was there um what, what did you do in particular was there any kind of meditations with anything that you would, would have recommended to people that they could do too <laughs> actually funny you should ask that because you know people a lot of people were furloughed you know and i although i wasn't furloughed because i was still busy instead of having people clients coming to my office i had to have clients online if you like on the internet on zoom on Reinstream, on whatsapp on facetime um on facebook so i had to change my whole delivery channel an appointment channel obviously to meet with the demands of the work so i had to attend many seminars webinars uh, training courses free courses of course for online products so obviously because big companies like zoom and Reinstream 
mainstream and others uh, who want you to use their products. They're going to give you the training free of charge because they want you to buy into their products. So I found that I was spending a lot of time doing some training and I got a lot of knowledge out of it. And I was also able to continue working online as I do today and I've completely changed and challenged myself in the way that I work now so all my work is now online or live at shows um, which I am moderating because uh, you know still COVID aware mm -hmm. so I haven't booked in as many shows as I normally do I think I've just done the two or I've, I've done one show this year but I've got another one coming up on the 29th of November I believe um, so that will be my last show this year uh, so that's that's the way I've I've uh, completely made the transformation for myself. I didn't waste it. I used the time available what I had to to learn new new products and new platforms. Social media, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a lot. A lot of uh, other people had to do the same thing, didn't they? Obviously, not you know just in the in the spiritual you know realms. It was it was everywhere really. People had to find a different way to work, different way. And if they were working for themselves, like like psychic um, practitioners do as well, you know, you have to find a different way of how to deliver your service uh, to people and, and and try and pivot and adapt to the situation. And it sounds like you you've done that very well. Absolutely. And I think that uh, not only my own success, um, but other people was also successful of le at learning new platforms because everybody uh, who I spoke to, or almost everybody, was using the same platforms as I'd uh, spent time and effort on these seminars and demonstrations and webinars. So, yeah, it kind of mixed and match and we all came out um, uh, mates, if you like. <laughs> Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's definitely the way that a lot of people are working now as well. And I know some people are kind of doing some face to face stuff now, obviously with uh, with the with the restrictions, um, you know, social distancing in mind as well. But uh, yeah, most people are still obviously doing the yeah. online stuff, which which makes sense. And obviously, you can do stuff, you know, far reaching stuff that you couldn't do in person anyway. You know, all over the world, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, yep. that was there anyway, but mm. it became more uh, dominant and prominent. Uh, online so yeah, yeah, yeah I kind of gathered a worldwide audience <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's worked well yeah exactly well well I mean we wanted to you to you to sort of take us back to the beginning of of kind of how you became or how you became aware that you were a psychic medium uh, was did this particular gift did it just just naturally come to you would you say it was uh, passed down through family how, how did that happen for you Oh, goodness me. Well, um, long story short, yes, uh, my ancestors, they were quite psychic. My great, great grandfather, uh, grandparents were from uh, Galway in Ireland and um, they were psychic and I feel like it's being passed through my family. My nephews and nieces, they're, they're quite psychic as well and their children are really psychic. But I actually... Uh, going back to your first question, when did it happen? When It happened when I was six years old and I saw a clown in the street outside the house where we lived in Manchester. I'm a Mancunian, born and bred, um, oh. although you wouldn't notice from my accent because I had elocution le lessons because no bugger could understand me at school. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I talk quite posh now. Um, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, that's when it was when I was six. But more importantly, when I was 11 years old, um, New Year's Eve 1970, a voice said to me, say goodbye to your sister, she's not coming back. And I was in the room on my own in my house. Uh, my par my mum, not my parents, because they were split, they separated at that time. Um, they were going to the club with my brothers and my sister was just got engaged that night. She was going to celebrate it with her fiancé, both 18. And this boy said to me, say goodbye to your sister, you're not coming, uh, she's not coming back, say goodbye to your sister, you're not going to see her again. And I thought, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Who's talking to me like that, you know? Anyway, uh, lots of things happened that night and um, uh, police knocked on the door and told us they, you know, uh, had some bad news and it turned out that my sister and her fiancé had died in a car crash. Oh, uh, God. Together. Wow. 
risk. So um, that was kind of uh, a prediction, if you like, or a voice uh, pre- premonition, mm. whatever you want to call it. The voices uh, I always used to pay attention to. And that one voice, because it repeated it twice, really sent goosebumps down my mm. spine. Uh, you know, so well, that must that have been terrible for you. So we're very sorry to obviously hear all that. That must have been terrible for you at yeah. such a young age as well. Yeah, I mean, I was 11 years old and I hate that mm. number because every time 11 comes up for me, I kid you not, Oliver, mm. it's bad luck, mm. you know, bad luck. That's all I can say. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so um, I kind of pushed the voices out for for many years because I blamed myself and I didn't tell anybody that I'd heard this voice say this to me because I thought they'd blame me for killing my sister off, you know, mm. like you do when you're a kid. You think those things, don't you? And I, I wouldn't say anything to anybody. But um, Was this uh, voice, sorry to interject, was the voice um, something that you heard while you were asleep or while you were awake? Or? No, no, I was wide awake. Mm. You know, uh, people were getting, my family were getting some of my brothers brothers were getting and my mum were getting ready to go out celebrate new year's eve and my brother and myself my twin brother and myself was uh being looked after by the next door neighbor as they did in them days you know mm. so um and it was a voice that i heard in the living room and there was only myself in the living room and the voice was it it would have been from somebody standing by the side of me because I heard it quite clearly in my right ear. Like somebody was literally standing there, but I couldn't see them. Mm. You know, so that that was the voice, and I've paid attention to voices ever since. You know, I'm not sure sometimes those voices uh, are beneficial to me or anybody else sometimes, but the thing is that they always tell the truth and that's what's important, isn't it? Mm, mm, mm. Yes, it is. Well, it's a very sad story and like I say, we're sorry to hear that, but um, yeah, well, I mean, so beyond sort of 11 years old after that, you, you sort of moved forwards and obviously a very, very difficult times moving forwards, but how did that kind of progress to you becoming, using um, a sort of tapped in gift that you had, uh, how did that progress into you actually using that as, as uh, for a living uh, as, a, as a psychic medium good it was mad it was quite mad you know because in between the time of uh that experience happening and me using it now i'd i'd gone to i'd gone over to denmark to work as a dj after um being in a dj in england for mm-hmm. quite a few years and then i came back and worked and then I got a job at the local university there as a temp, and I ended up staying there for 15 years. Right. <laughs> 15, yes, 15 years. And during the course of that time, I was very, I was becoming more very, uh, even before then, actually, uh, even before then, spiritually aware, and I just knew things about people. I knew things that were going to happen. I could see things happening. I, I used to have a, I still do, obviously, have a lot of premonitions and predictions that uh, all transpire. So it's kind of, I don't know. I've been given this gift and uh, making use of it, but more so, I always question why I can see into the future and the future is always accurate. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. it doesn't, but I can't explain it, you know. And uh, because I worked at the university, obviously I worked around academics, professors, um, and even those, uh, I've been tried and tested by them, not on a scientific basis, because that's something I would not uh, volunteer to do because I, <laughs> I've read too much about these uh, scientific uh, experiments being designed to fail and mm-hmm. if you look at research you will discover yourself why <laughs> you as a psychic or a medium or anybody who's a psychic or, or medium would not um, take uh, time out to be in one of these scientific uh, experiments so I've been tested tried and tested around uh, acad- academics under natural f- circumstances if you mm-hmm. like you know Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I totally agree with you with that, and a lot of this stuff, you know, um, has been, you know, a lot of a lot of studies are kind of 
manipulated, aren't they? And the conclusions are manipulated and sometimes and kind of like, you know, who is funding the studies and this, that and the other, not just in, you know, uh, you know psychic uh, ESP or whatever you want to say, but anything really. So you're right, yeah. you have to be kind of careful who you who you attach yourself to when it comes to stuff like that and really have an idea of what you what the study's about and who's behind it and stuff before you get involved i imagine i know i mean in america there's some really good start paranormal scientists yeah. over there you know and they've been, they've done a lot of work written books done programs you know and everything like that and even uh their proof can't be proved so if yeah. these scientists proof can't be proved then god knows who's got a chance of being proved proven for anything you know yeah but i guess you just have to at the end of the day prove to your clients that and that that's the proof of the pudding isn't it and the people that you read for you, you know none of us no matter what job we're in we've got nothing to prove to anybody our <laughs> skills are evidence alone of what our capabilities and our knowledge and our experiences are Ex- about. Exactly, yeah. The outcome of the, the work that you do is, is the proof, isn't yeah. it? Or the, yeah, the knowledge. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, thank you for that. That's great. Um, well, I mean, from the many readings that you've kind of done as a medium over the years, is there one that you kind of vividly re- would remember that really kind of sticks out in your mind? <laughs> I can't. The, honestly, Oliver, there just wouldn't be one. There, there'd be okay. uh, blimmin' tons. There would be tons and tons of them, you know, some sad, some not so sad. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I, rem- I, kind of, I don't know if I should talk about it really, you know, but oh, go on, I will. Go on. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember once I had a, a, um, a client sat in front of me uh, I, I spoke about her in my book and, uh, you know, and she gave me permission, but she was with me and um, in my office and I had a rocking chair at the time, a little wooden, well, it was quite a big wooden rocking chair. And her husband had made an appearance. We was having a good old conversation, giving evidence, this, that and the other, you know, what furniture they would bought and who, what company they bought it from. You know, it was going really well. And um, I, I feel that her husband bless him in the spirit world there had a bit of a a, a a wink in his eye for the women there you know and before I knew it he'd uh, tipped me off my rocking chair and I'd ended up on the floor <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like um, trying to get up off the floor with a rocking chair on top of you was, was a sight for sore eyes I can tell you you know <laughs> that's a really but, good story really good thank you Carol well that's going to move us nicely uh, into a break now um, we're hearing some wonderful stuff here on Psychic Social from Psychic Medium Carol uh, today and we're very much looking forward to hearing more from her in part two where we might possibly hear about her guides uh, her take on the afterlife and much more so we'll see you after this Hi, hope you're enjoying the show today. Now we have a brand new horoscope email you can subscribe to at psychic.co.uk. All you have to do is wait for the pop-up to show on the website and then enter your email and star sign and every Sunday night we'll email you a free horoscope for the week ahead. Now you can dive in one step further if you wish and take a look at our Horoscope Plus memberships. This is your weekly horoscope, plus a lot more. There are three memberships to choose from, and we've covered all budgets, we feel. So the Robin membership gives you private, exclusive access to a more detailed horoscope on the member horoscope pages at the website, and a chance to win a psychic reading via Zoom each month. And you'll get a free access code as well to the taster version of our amazing video tarot course with Nikki Allen, 10 Hour Tarot. Now, this membership is just £1.99 per month, and you can cancel it anytime you like. There's a ton of stuff in there for such a small amount of money, so much value. Uh, the next membership we've got is the Feather membership. It's a step up from there, and it's just £5.99 per month, and you can also cancel anytime for that one too. Now, as a Feather member, you'll get a much more detailed, in depth horoscope than the Robin membership horoscope. And on that Feather member horoscope page on the website, you'll get exclusive access to that with over a thousand words of horoscope broken down into three sections. That's including romance, work and family. It really will give you a fantastic insight into the week ahead every single week. You'll also get our truly amazing astrology video uh, that's thrown in for free as well, which is 30 minutes of fantastic content on astrology. And as with the Robin membership, you'll also get a chance to win a psychic reading via Zoom every month too. 
So that's wonderful value in there as well for $5.99 a month uh, for the Feather membership. And the final membership is the Angel member. That's the top level membership uh, to access on the site. That gives you some amazing stuff. And all that info is on the website. Just head to psychic.co.uk slash membership and take a look at which one will suit you we'll put the link in the show notes uh, of this podcast down below for you so you can just click there and check them all out there you can also check out the horoscope page and have a little sneak peek at what the robin members uh, are getting there already that's at psychic.co.uk slash horoscope right now back to the show Welcome back to part two of Psychic Social and our chat with psychic medium Carol Bromley. Now, we were hearing some great stories from Carol before the break um, about some readings that she'd done in the past. Uh, now, Carol, um, could you tell us any about any of your readings that you've done? We, we hear that you've done some sort of reality stars readings for them. Um, could you tell us more about these, if you're able to, please? Yeah, I, I, um, I can, but um, I don't name. Sure. Uh, because of client confidentiality. Yep. But yes, I've done quite a few reality stars um, over the years, um, as it happens. And they are quite nice people, uh, a lot of them. Well, I found them all to be quite nice, actually. And um, occasionally I've been sent the odd bouquet of flowers mm-hmm. <laughs> to my office as well from some celebrities. I've also done uh, film producers on who have been seen on the red carpet as well. Um, so yeah, I've you know got a kind of quite busy. Uh, I, I I don't like the word celebrity, you know, but I like to treat all my clients the same, really. But mm-hmm. I'd say more of the well-known people. Sure. You know, I kind of like most who, if not all of them, actually, who I have read for over the years. Well, that sounds very interesting that you've read for for all those people over the years. Um, well. We wanted to ask you about, um, we haven't sort of touched upon this yet, but ask you about your guide or, or guides in, in plural. Um, now, nearly all of the kind of psychic practitioners that have been on Psychic Social uh, to date have seemed to have had more than one guide. Is, is it the same as you, Carol? Yeah, absolutely. As soon as you said guides, they all started turning up fast. Right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. You know, it's almost like, did somebody call my name? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah. My main communicating guide, though, is uh, Hannah. She uh, was a nurse in the Crimean War who introduced herself to me during Dream State one night when I heard her calling my name. So uh, very interesting that she took me around the war torn uh, area and fields of the Crimean War there. But I've also got healing guides. I've got uh, a monk. I've got um native american indian there i've got a reiki guide because i'm a reiki teacher as well mm-hmm. so i work with uh, i call her janet my reiki guide there so yeah there are and i've got um he's not a guide but he's an angel so i use saint uh angel michael archangel michael mm-hmm. for uh protection whenever i'm going into uh a premises or a venue or a house that uh, would have a negative entity in it mm-hmm. so i use archangel michael for that little bit of added protection there sure okay and um with in terms of like um the native american indian guides a lot of uh, mediums that have come on and that we've spoken to have said that they connect with with american indian guides as well native american indian guides um would you say that was possibly because of how spiritual they were and how spiritually connected they are or were uh, at those times to the other side or the spirit world? Would you say that was why they they, they, they present themselves as guides to a lot of mediums? Yeah, possibly. But I also think it's because a lot of the Native Americans were um, an indigenous type of people with uh, a natural ability to connect with mother earth and uh naturalness if you like so a lot of their experience have been uh given to us or shown to us or empowered with us to use those uh skills and abilities that the native american indians had Mm, because they were very connected and grounded to 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 the earth weren't they and they did a lot of ceremonies didn't they spiritual ceremonies you know they go on their vision quest Mm. after you know a little bit of wacky backy and (laughs) 
they yep. set their intentions to connect with the higher realms there, you know. And they come back with some really wise words and some really good uh, philosophies as well. Sure, sure, they definitely do. And sort of talking, you know, talking about the the higher realms and and, and that subject. What are your thoughts about the higher realms, the afterlife, the spirit world, um, you know, through your mediumships, mediumship experiences so far in your life? Uh, and what do you think happens when we kind of eventually our energy shifts away from Earth and we, and we pass on? Well, it's kind of, it's kind of um, when it's been around you for most of your life, or when something or someone's been around you for most of your life, you cut you you kind of accept it, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very hard, although it's very hard for me to accept at one point. I kept telling spirit to bugger off, you know. <laughs> uh, I wasn't having it, but you know, I couldn't be, and so I joined them. That was that was the way it was, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but yes, the uh, the afterlife is certainly there, and it certainly does exist, and uh, uh, scientific research. Does does uh, prove that but also it is uh, people have this concept about the physical body surviving in the afterlife and it actually doesn't it's actually the conscious mind that survives and travels in the ether there that's why spirit is able to travel anywhere in the world or anywhere in the universe you know when people ask me uh, from the other side of the world maybe south africa sri lanka or america wherever if i can connect to their loved one even though i'm not in their country can i still connect the answer is yes because that consciousness uh, can be tapped into and can travel there as well you know it's like the hub of someone's dna and when you're a psychic or a medium you can tap into that energy there that energy connects to you Mm. and that energy is supposedly you know very very close to us so close to us that we can sometimes feel it but just most people can never see it or or feel it or tap into it yeah absolutely right you know i mean heaven is above us but i always say that heaven is around next to us you know people walk with us uh, spirit walk next to us sit next to us talk next to us you know um spirit is all around us you know Mm. it is an energy Mm. you know and even though some people may not be able to see it hear it feel it or sense it many people know and they're aware that it is there Mm. Mm. And what do you think about consciousness, kind of, uh, we are all one in consciousness, so we are obviously all interconnected and, and actually we are all, consciousness is us, is everyone. Yeah, that's, a, that's kind of a big thing, isn't it? It's like having a big party up in yeah. the sky, isn't it? You know, who are you going to invite, you know? what's yeah. who, Who's your family, you know? And it's like these soul groups are all split into uh, different uh, families over there in the, the spirit world, you know? But, yeah, we can all be connected in one way or another, but, mm. you know, it's a bit like your family tree trying to track back your ancestors, you know, to try and track back the people or souls you've been connected to in the past the present or even in the future is one hell of a job you know and i don't think anybody could achieve that in any lifetime (laughs) Mm, mm. yeah exactly and and do you kind of subscribe to the thought process that kind of like you know you said obviously um that we are just we are on this earth and everyone's kind of connected and everyone can tap into everyone else i mean that we are like i am not me and you are not you you are your consciousness controlling your existence incarnation on earth uh, from from somewhere else Did, would you subscribe to that that, that would be right in thinking that uh well it's it's complicated isn't it oliver yeah you know and it's it, it, it is more it is quite scientific you know and i'm not really on that scientific le- level to say yes or no i believe that things are what what they are you know sure. and for for that it's um I don't know. It's oh, it's a bit like UFOs, you know. Do people believe in UFOs? Yeah. It's a belief system as well, mm, isn't it? Yeah. So it works for some people, but um, it's not something that I dwell on or would think about too often. Sure, sure. And, and we have, like you say, we only have we have theories because that's all we know, don't we? Really, and what on what you guys, you know, mediums can can tell people from their experiences yeah. and the way you tap in uh, to things and energies. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Carol. It's it's good to hear your take on that. Um, 
Now, we're coming towards the end of the show, uh, and the last couple of questions we've got for you are going to be moving slightly away from the psychic and spirit world. We just wanted the listeners to get to know a bit more about you in terms of what you like to read um, and what you like to watch on TV, anything like that. Oh, my God. Do you know what? I like murders. I am so obsessed. I know it's horrible to say, isn't it? Murders. I like to... I actually spend a lot of time um, being a psychic detective, you know, focusing through the eyes of a victim or the eyes of the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. I know it's morbid and it sounds, you know, but having spent nearly 25 years in this business doing what I do, mm-hmm. it's like this part of it is more uh, challenging and more a um, uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, it's it's something that needs to, be, for me, that I need to do to find out about, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's something that I need to see more beyond uh, the normal. Yeah. The normal. Yeah. If you like it, yeah. So that's what I do. I just like murders and I like, um, you know, I like the CSIs, I like the NCIS and, Mm -hmm. you know, um, anything that's got psychological in it or thriller in it, you know. Uh, But I don't like blood and gore. That's one thing I don't like. And I don't like blood and gore. I like the mysteries. Sure. Did you watch uh, Vigil? I don't watch a lot of TV, but I watched Vigil recently with Saran Jones. Have you seen that at all? No. This is the no. murder on the submarine, the Royal Navy submarine. It's actually quite good. Oh, yeah. Actually, yes, I did. Yes, mm. sorry, I beg your pardon. Yes, I did watch that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And like, you know, it, it can be so annoying for me when I watch programs because I know what people are going to say before they say it. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. And it, I know the answer before the answer's been given. Mm-hmm. I know what the result is. You know? <laughs> God, <laughs> that must be pretty annoying. Yeah, it is pretty yeah. annoying. Yeah. You know, but okay. I did watch it and I did know what it was, where it was leading to. You know, when I sit there sometimes and I, I just see, know what they're going to say next. I don't know whether it's obvious to other people or not, but yeah. I just know what they're going to say next. You know, yeah. it's almost like. I, well, I just know. <laughs> but credit to you, you know? that you still give it a go and watch it, you know. <laughs> well, you know, even though I don't mean to, like, uh, take the words out of their mouth, literally. <laughs> you just do, yeah. Well, there we go. That's that's the uh, the energy and the gift showing through there all the time, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. 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 No, I do like the psychology. Yeah, and that was a good programme as well. That's good, yeah. yeah. And, of course, I did, uh, what, what was the other one called? The... Um, uh, not the Finn Blue Line. What was Blue? What was the other one he was in? Colin Compton. Oh, is this uh, the? Um, uh, yes. Please, what is it? I, I can't oh, think of the name. Of it's like charades, there, isn't it? Yeah. If so, if someone can send us an email and let us know which one it is, because we can't remember. <laughs> Give us a clue. I've got got blood. I've got a blooming brain block now yeah i did watch that one as well that was that was very yeah. good as well the police and that was yeah. that was amazing it, they are doing another program of it though aren't they so yeah. i'm going to be watching that one as we'll well watch that. yeah definitely well that's good to hear that thank you carol well i mean it's been wonderful to have you on psychic social today uh before thank we yeah th- thank you carol before we let you go um we need to let everyone know that you can check out carol's psychic practitioner profile on psychic.co.uk right now and book a reading with her directly all you have to do is head to her profile page on the site, which you can find at all the W's. That's www.psychic.co.uk slash carol dash Bromley. And you can watch Carol's biography video and also see how she reads for people on her live readings highlights video, which was recorded live from one of our Facebook live reading events. And you can listen again to this podcast on her profile page there too. So lots of great ways to find out more about Carol there at psychic.co.uk. So once again, that profile page for Carol is psychic.co.uk slash Carol dash Bromley. And all that leads me to say is thank you so much for joining us uh, today and sharing all this great stuff with me and the listeners here, Carol, on Psychic Social. Thank you for joining us on today's show. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We'll take care. I look forward to speaking with you again very soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you, Carol. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us on Psychic Social from psychic.co.uk the spiritual home of psychics.